What is going on, everybody? It is March 30th. We've got a Friday slate. Uh, it's been a good week. We've got baseball is back in our lives. We've got a nice sized uh, Friday slate, <clears throat> depending on which slate you're or which site you're playing on. Uh, you've got the potential for a nine game slate on DK, eight games on FanDuel. The Magic Bulls game is not included on the FanDuel slate. So, tons to talk about. Lots of interesting injury news, so uh, we're just going to dive right in. Um, first up, we will look at the Magic and Bulls games for all you uh, DK people out there. Magic 109 implied total. They are six and a half point favorites at home against the Bulls. Um, you know, no Jonathan Simmons still. We should see Jonathan Isaac and Wesley Awundu. Uh not that that really matters all that much. Um, for me, Aaron Gordon at 8,400 is is someone that I would want to take a look at. Great matchup. Bulls are terrible. Uh, so no problem taking a deeper look there. Um, Orlando with the number one center matchup on the slate makes me want to really have a ton of uh, Vooch. 8,100 on DK. Grades out really well. Um, Gordon and Vooch are both uh, really nice plays on DK today because of this matchup. If you want to use Hazonia or DJ Augustin, you know, that's totally totally fine. I don't have much of a problem there. Um, loading up against the Bulls is always a good strategy. Just they're not there defensively. Um, I'm not over the moon for Hazonia, even though he's coming off of two really solid games. Um, just because, you know, if Isaac and a one do are back, it's a, it might shave his minutes just a little bit. Uh, so something to pay attention to there. But I see no reason uh, why you shouldn't smash um, Gordon and Vooch. For the Bulls, uh, Bulls 102.5 implied total, 6.5 point underdogs in Orlando. Um, we should see Lowry Markinen back. Uh, no Levine, no Dunn. <clears throat> uh, Zipser likely should see the floor as well. But really, there's only uh, a couple options here. Um, you know, not the best matchup in the world, depending on position. Uh, point guard's pretty solid, uh, but tough sledding for shooting guards and centers. Um, I think Bobby Portis looks pretty good at 5,800. Uh, that's a nice price point for him. Went for 28 last night in 26 minutes. Uh, been pretty consistent lately. I, I could see a scenario where he has a big game. All right, you know, big for Bobby Portis at least. Dude likes to shoot. Um, I like Markinen at 5,400 uh, just because, you know, he's good. Why is that not showing yesterday's game? Did I not refresh that? Where are you hiding? 329. Very weird. I don't know why that's not showing up for me. Still not there. I don't know. Not a, not gonna matter much. Uh, totally fine with having Markin in uh, if he plays. I think that he would be a focus point of the offense, so it would definitely be a direction I would like to go. Um, let's move to Atlanta now, and we'll get to uh, games on both state on both sites. Hawks hosting the Sixers. Uh, the Hawks are six and a half point underdogs in Atlanta. Uh, by far the most difficult matchup on the board. Uh, Sixers are just nasty. One thing to keep in mind, though, it's not as difficult as it normally would be. Joel Embiid not going to be playing tonight. Uh, so defensively, the Hawks have a little bit better of a scenario, but it's still the Hawks. Um, I think that Isaiah Taylor still works as a value play at point guard with Dennis Schroeder out. I think So he'll grade out pretty well. Um, I think John Collins grades out pretty well at 5,500, although he has not had anything close to a big game lately. So buyer beware there. Um, I prefer Damian Lee to be under 4,000, but you know he put up 32 in his last game, so it's a big-time return on a $4,000 price point. No problems having him. 
Uh, you can rotate in Deadman and Muscala and be happy. Um, it's really not a... If you're going to have anybody from the Hawks, tonight's the night to do it because the Sixers' defense is dramatically different without Embiid. It doesn't make it a good play by any means, but there's a lot of value here to be found on the Hawks. I have no problem grabbing a couple of these guys. Uh, Prince is really the only guy that I wouldn't have a ton of interest in. Um, he'll still have to deal with you know really solid wing defense. So I'd rather look towards the Taylors and Damian Lees of the world. Now for Philly, um, 111.5 implied total is fifth, six and a half point favorites in Atlanta. Really good matchup for point guards, small forwards, and centers. And we'll need to fill in the minutes for Embiid. Um, Simmons at 9,600, 9,400 on DK. I don't really have much interest in him without Embiid. Uh, I think it makes it a little bit different for him. Um, there's not as much pull away from the basket from uh, Amir Johnson or Rashawn Holmes, so I don't like the high end of Simmons. Um, you know, you can you can cycle in Sarge, Covington, and Redick, but uh, the guys that I would be looking at more would probably be Ersan Ilyasova at 4,100 on FanDuel, 4,000 on DK, um, and then you can take punts on Amir Johnson or Rashawn Holmes. Uh, Amir is minimum salary on FanDuel, 3500 on DK. I think both of those guys will be worth flyers with Embiid off the floor. We'll go to Cleveland now. Cavs hosting the Pelicans. Um, Cavs five-point favorites at home. Uh, this line does not exist yet, but I have the Cavs as the second-highest implied total. Um, as of right now, projecting Kevin Love to be in. LeBron at 12-3 on FanDuel is, is pretty pricey, uh, but Pelican's defense is porous, to say the least. So for me, I don't have any issues having some LeBron. I don't have any issues having some Kevin Love. Uh, I think that Jordan Clarkson is someone you can entertain in a GPP at 4,200 on FanDuel, but... Um, you know, be wary. Uh, sort, same sort of scenario for Rodney Hood. I think these guys have relatively limited upsides, uh, but I think one or two, one of the, one of these guys could pop off at any moment. Uh, you know, Hood went for 30 a couple nights ago. Clarkson having a little bit more of a struggle. Um, went for 29 uh, on the on March 23rd. But my focus would be LeBron and Kevin Love. I think they're in a really good spot. Pelicans defense is not good. Uh, if we go look at the Pelicans now, Anthony Davis stands out to me. 12-3 on FanDuel, 11-6 on DK. Much like uh, Cleveland's matchup, Pelicans have a good one too. Um, Cleveland not very good on D. Uh, I think AD looks good. I'd probably prefer LeBron to AD. Um just because of the sort of AD has a hangnail, he's going to be out for the rest of the game type shit that happens. Um, but what I would really like in this game would be Drew Holiday. 8,100 on FanDuel, 8,200 on DK. Um, I liked Drew Holiday even when he was priced a bit higher than this, but right at this number uh, against the Cavs, uh, that's definitely a scenario where I want to have some Drew Holiday. I think he looks like a, a really nice play. Uh, at shooting guard and then from there um you know rondo is if he's playing is always sort of in play uh in a gpp format so i'll likely have a bit of rondo as well nobody else really stands out for me i don't have a ton of interest in eton Moore. for the rockets uh, rockets with a 117 implied total this line did not exist either these were these two the last two games were the only ones that didn't have a line uh, I've got the Rockets as 16-point favorites in Phoenix. Uh, by all accounts, everyone it should be active for uh, the Rockets, so this could be a really, really uh, rough game for the Suns. Um, amazing matchup for the Rockets. We all know that Suns are terrible on D. 11-3 on FanDuel for Harden, 11-5 on DK. 
Um, if he plays, like I expect him to get thirty plus minutes, so I don't I don't have any problem paying up for Harden. Um, I won't be looking towards Ariza, and I think it'll be pretty hard for Chris Paul to to exceed value at eighty seven hundred on both sites in this game. I expect him to be hyper efficient, but Paul is not going to be the guy that gets uh, a heaping ton of minutes. Um, someone like Eric, Eric Gordon could be uh, an interesting play, but his salary is dramatically inflated on DraftKings right now because of the previous injuries. So um, he'd be worth a flyer in a GPP scenario because I think he'd get minutes even in a blowout. Um, but for me, my focus would be just on James Harden, and then uh, I think Clint Capella on DraftKings looks exceptional at 6,900. He should really be able to do whatever he wants to do against that Phoenix front court. Speaking of Phoenix, uh, the Suns' 17th implied total, 101 expected points. Um, not a good spot. Uh, but it's possible that Devin Booker is back. And if Booker is back at 6,900 on FanDuel, I think that he is close to a must-play. No such thing as a lock, but... Um, I expect him to get run if he does. If he is able to play, I expect him to get a full allotment of run, and he is underpriced right now on FanDuel. Otherwise, you know, Josh Jackson is is acceptable. He's been really consistent lately. Five straight games in the mid 30s uh, has the ability to go up into the high 40s and 50s. So I don't have any problem taking a flyer there. But it's really not a great matchup, and I don't think that anybody else really grades out as particularly valuable. Uh, Bender is fine in GPPs, but you know he can also play 19 minutes and pick up four fantasy points. So my focus is Booker if he's able to be on the floor. The Thunder, uh, 113.75 implied total is tied for, nope, just straight up third. Uh, they're three and a half point favorites at home against the Nuggets. Um, I like this matchup a lot. Uh, Paul George at 7,700 is is priced perfectly for me. 8,100 on DK. I don't have any problem having a good amount of Paul George. Those last two games that he's played, or last couple games, have not been the best for George. Um, but I'm I'd be happy to run him out there. I'd be happy to run out Russ at 11-4, 11-3 on DK. No problem paying up there. Um, I just think they're in a really good spot in a game that they still want to win. Um, Adams at 7,200. Uh, a good matchup for centers. You know, Jokic isn't exactly terrifying. Uh, you know, Adams has been incredibly consistent this year, and at 7,200 on both sites, he's a center that I would want to have a part of. And, you know, I'm willing to have a little bit of Carmelo. I like being let down every night, uh, so rostering someone like Carmelo Anthony is the perfect way to be let down uh, on the reg. I don't know. Gingerberry uh, kombucha. Pretty damn tasty. Um, if you want to use Corey Brewer as a flyer in GPPs, I'd be fine with that as well. But my main focus would be those top three guys of George Westbrook and Adams. For the Nuggets, 110.25 uh, implied total. They are tied for eighth in implied total. Um, not a good matchup. Uh, Oklahoma City really stingy defensively. So be prepared for that. Uh, Wilson Chandler at 5,200, 5,100 on DK. I don't mind taking a flyer there. I know it's a really difficult matchup, but uh, with Chandler's price coming down a little bit, um, sometimes he just goes ham and hangs one of those 40-point games out there. And you would love that at that price point. Uh, I think Jamal Murray looks pretty good on DK at 6,800. Um, but the guy that I would be looking at most in this game would be Will Barton. 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,800 on DK. Uh, I think he has the most upside of anybody on the Nuggets. I don't really want to run Jokic head-on into Adams, so uh, I'll be a little bit muted there. And uh, Paul Millsap at 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. Feels relatively safe for me. He's been playing a little bit better. Um, I don't have any issue having him. 
Now the Mavs are hosting the Minnesota Timberwolves. Five and a half point favorites or five and a half point underdogs at home are the Mavs. Thirteenth highest implied total. Uh, very difficult matchup defensively. I don't have a ton to like here. JJ Barea likely back. Um, so I think that Dennis Smith is fine on DraftKings in particular. I think he's okay on FanDuel. Uh, I feel a similar way, but like a step down with Harrison Barnes. Um, but really, there's not much I want to I want to have here. Um, in their last game, they played 13 guys, so the minutes are starting to thin out. And when that's the case, there's just not a lot of fantasy upside. So Dallas is not going to be a focus of mine tonight. Wolves, on the other hand, uh, solid matchup. 111 implied total, which is sixth. We've got Carl Towns at 10-9 on FanDuel, 10-1 on DK. Coming off the monster 81-point fantasy game, um, I look for him to continue something like that. Uh, he's rolling into form right now, and I think that he can keep that uh, that hot game alive up against Dallas. Minnesota still with a ton to play for. Um, and then after that, I'm just sort of... Oh, the rest of the guys are in coin flip territory. I like that Wiggins is back under 7,000, but Wiggins, Bielitsa, Teague, and Gibson, you can, you can slot those guys in as you see fit. Don't prioritize anybody, but if they show up, I don't really have much of an issue with it. Uh, I think Bielitsa is the one guy that I'd be a little bit nervous about. Um, and that's just because Dallas has been pretty solid at, at limiting small forwards. So Bielitsa would be my least of the, of the other th four guys. So I would have him last in the Wiggins, Bielitsa, T Gibson group. Uh, and if you want to have Jamal Crawford as a GPP punt, particularly on DK where he's only 3,700, I think that's feasible as well. Next, a game which, honestly, I was surprised at the line when I saw it. The Utah Jazz hosting the Memphis Grizzlies. Jazz with a 105.25 implied total, which is 14th. They are 14.5 point favorites at home, giving the Grizzlies a 90.75 implied total, which is the lowest that I've seen this year, and dangerously close to being sub-90 in points. They're dead last by over 10 points, and oh my god, they suck. <laughs> And yet they still won a game a couple nights ago. It's amazing. Uh, for the Jazz, you know, the Grizzlies are still going to turn that game into a bit of a slog. So it does make me not really like the Jazz guys all that much. Um, Donovan Mitchell is fine at those prices. Rudy Gobert is fine at those prices. They're just not guys I want to really, like, go crazy about. The only thing that I see that would be an amazing play... Uh, would be Ricky Rubio at DK, 6,700, uh, coming off a game where he put up 46. He's had four game, wait, five games in his last two weeks um, in the mid-40s, which is amazing at that DraftKings price. Highly, highly recommend uh, some Ricky Rubio on DK. But if you want to use Utah guys, that's fine. Just beware that, you know, this game could be well out of hand late, you know, it wouldn't shock me if the Grizzlies started the fourth quarter with, like, 60 total points or something stupid. Um, nothing to hate on uh, on Utah, but limited upside, in my opinion. Oh, the Grizzlies. So, assuming still no Tyreek and, no, um, and no Harrison, we'll get a lot of Marshawn Brooks and Chalmers, but... Nobody's really playing heavy, heavy minutes. The only guys I think that you could really look at are Mark Gasol, which I have no interest in. Although 7,100 on FanDuel is feasible. Um, he did just roll out a 55-point game a couple nights ago, so I think he's worth a flyer. Um, and Jermichael Green at 5,000 is also probably worth a flyer. But I don't know. These guys are just so bad. It, you know, Marshawn Brooks went for 30 fantasy points in 21 minutes two nights ago. He's still minimum salary on both sites. So as a punt play, you can get there. But don't forget that um, you're getting a very difficult defensive team for a team and a, a squad that's only projected to score 91 actual points tonight, which is dreadful. So try not to get too excited over anybody on the Grizzlies. 
The Lakers are hosting the Bucks. Uh, Lakers are two point favorites at home against the Bucks. 110.25 implied total, uh, tied for eighth with the Nuggets. Um, it's possible we see Josh Hart back. Uh, had a hand injury. I think it was his hand. Um, he's questionable for today, which will just, you know, take away some of these awful minutes that have been going to other guys and uh, lighten the load a bit of the main crew. Um, average matchup in my opinion I think all of these prices are still a little inflated from them running heavy minutes so there's nobody on the Lakers that I want to outwardly seek out um, you can have bits of KCP Ball, Randall, Ingram Lopez, Kuzma, I don't really have much of an issue across the board uh, Kuzma though is a little worrisome um but for me, if they show up, fine. But they're going to be relatively minimal in my lineups. There's just not a lot to like there. Bucks, uh, 108.25 implied total is 11th. Two-point underdogs in LA. A pretty decent matchup for point guards and small forwards. And then we've got Giannis at 11,000. Uh, 10-8 on DK. Put up 58 fantasy points on March 27th. No problems having Giannis here. I think he's in a situation where uh, he could really do some damage to the Lakers. I don't think they have anybody that can guard him. Not that like anybody really does, but they're really not set up for it. Um, and then Middleton and Bledsoe, just because of the matchups, uh, I like them both. I prefer Middleton to Bledsoe on FanDuel. I'll take Bledsoe over Middleton on DK with the $700 price savings. But I like all three of those guys. I'll probably have a solid amount of them. And then John Henson, uh, 5,100 on FanDuel, I think is a really interesting lower tier center play. Uh, not as much interest on DK at 5,400. Um, but those top three guys, the Giannis Middleton Bledsoe group, looks good to me. That's not where I type that. Blazers, final game, hosting the Clippers. 112.25 implied total is fourth. They are six and a half point favorites at home against the Clippers. We will see Dame Lillard back after uh, taking a night, uh, one game off uh, for the birth of his child. Uh, in his previous game to that, uh, Lillard went ham sandwich, dropped 72.8 FanDuel points. Uh, let's see if he can keep that sort of momentum alive. Um, Portland still with a ton to play for. A solid matchup, not necessarily at the point guard spot, but you know I wouldn't be worried about having Dame at 9,600 on either site. Uh, what I would prefer is probably CJ, 8,000 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Portland with the third best matchup for shooting guards. Um, CJ with a couple 45-point games uh, earlier this week. Went for 54 without Lillard. Uh, it looks like CJ's rounding into form right now. Um, I'd have no issues having some CJ. Evan Turner uh, was a, a dirty, dirty piece of shit um, with Lillard out. Put up 11 fantasy points in 30 minutes. I still think that he's in an okay spot now that Mo Harkless is out. He could see some additional minutes, and if he does uh, see those minutes, I think that Turner is worth a flyer in GPPs. If he gets up to like 25 fantasy points or something, you know, you could live with that. Don't go crazy because he's Evan Turner and he's just as likely to dud as he is to do anything solid. And then finally, Nurkic, 7,400 on FanDuel, 6,500 on DK. Nurkic with three straight games in the 40s, had a 50-point game uh, 10 days ago, a 40-point game before that. Really been playing well. Um, 6,500 is just a preposterous price on DK. I don't have a ton of problem having him um, you know, I don't like running into DeAndre, but I think that $6,500 price point on DraftKings is really appealing. Then finally, we've got the Clippers. Uh, Clippers, 105.75 implied total. Six and a half point underdogs in Portland. Uh, 12th highest implied total. Where do they stand in the playoffs right now? Thirty-nine percent chance of making the playoffs, so they are without question going hard uh, in this game. So keep that in mind. 
Um, not a big fan of Austin Rivers. Uh, I don't see a ton of upside at that $6,000 price point. Um, particularly against the Blazers, who have been really solid defensively. Uh, similar scenario for me for Tobias Harris. I just don't really love it. Lou Will, though... Um, Price is depressed, 6800 on FanDuel. I'm going to smash Lou Will big time here. 7900 on DK is really not that appealing, but I will always take a chance on Lou Will getting some some uh, some big buckets, particularly at that price point. And then uh, DeAndre, 7500 on FanDuel is probably a bit more than I want to spend. He's been right around that value mark in his last two games. I'll likely have a little bit of him, but nothing crazy. And then uh, Tyrone Wallace on DK at 3,400. Uh, played 34 minutes their last time out. If he's going to get that sort of 30-plus minutes, like I've got him at 30 here, uh, if he's going to get something like that uh, at that price point on DK, you definitely want to use him as, uh, as a punt to fit some bigger stuff in today. So that's a quick run-through. What I'm going to do is grab my projections and toss them into Fantasy Cruncher. We'll see... Um, We'll see what shakes out. <sighs> it's a good day. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but we have a similar video to this for baseball that was posted earlier today. I highly recommend you check that out if you're going to be playing the main slate of MLB. We're going to have lots of video content moving forward. Use some randomness, and we will go. Yeah, a lot of Russ, a lot of Rashawn Holmes. Seems to be loving Evan Turner, which is not something that I'm super pumped about. But I do like the Russ play. So what I'll do first, I'll grab Russ, and I'm going to grab Devin Booker, because I hope that he plays. Uh, if I grab Giannis as well, what sort of direction do I need to go in? Um, let's grab Damian Lee and we'll see what we have here. All of those end up with Evan Turner, so let's walk that back a bit. Might not have a choice. If I grab Wilson Chandler... Yeah, I don't have a problem. But I don't have a problem here. Um, I think that's probably a little bit limiting, having Amir Johnson and Rashawn Holmes. But, you know, if you're thinking about them being one player at 7,300, you know, 40-plus out of those guys should happen, particularly against Atlanta. Um, so not a huge issue there. I like the, the bits of everything else. I would probably try to find a little bit better um, combination at power forward and center. And then for DK, Ooh, I am hungry. 11.56, and the only thing I had was like a bite of ham. I made a ham yesterday. Like it's like a legit ham. Damn good. Nobody cares about that. But I don't know. Cooked it sous vide. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Heats up the ham perfectly. So it doesn't get overcooked. Stays super juicy. It's the way to do it. Ham, super underrated. It doesn't just have to be for uh, holidays. You can make a ham at all times. And that's my rant on ham. Let's see what we get for, uh, for DK lineups here. I really like that kombucha. Ooh, this is uh, not moving fast, that's for sure. Lots of John Collins, lots of Marshawn Brooks, which makes sense at minimum salary. Definitely going to try to put him in there. Nurkic looks great at that price, as we know. Let's take a look at the rankings for DK. Okay, we're good there. So let's grab Nurkic first. And then uh, I'm going to grab Marshawn Brooks from a value perspective. I'm going to grab... AD first. We can grab Tyrone Wallace. If I needed a small forward, I think 
out of everybody I see there, how much is Damien Lee? 4,200, that's kind of pricey. What if I grab LBJ? Uh, you know, if he needed to take a punt on Solomon Jerry, I'd be okay with it, 3,100. It's a really boomy bus lineup. I like this second one a little bit more, but man, is that a lot of crap. The Isaiah Taylor, Marshawn Brooks, Solomon Jerry, Tyrone Wallace, foursome is, uh, would be a little panic inducing, but it would be a very interesting GPP lineup, that's for sure. And with that said, I am done. Uh, I'll be around all day for any questions. Feel free to hit me up, uh, whether that's in the comments section here or on my Twitter feed, at Josh Engelman. Look out for awesomeo.com. You'll see slam dunk articles. Uh, Alex's rankings will be out uh, probably around 1 o'clock. Um, ownership percentages, all that stuff is still out there, still free for right now. Highly recommend you check it out and see what we're doing. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Now that we're on the new channel and this is not my previous channel, we're still trying to build that up. Um, the faster that we can get those subscription numbers, the subscriber numbers up, the faster that we can monetize the channel, uh, and get some, get a little bit of ad revenue in, which is always beneficial for us. Makes it a little bit easier. Um, but yeah, like and subscribe if you liked it. Like and subscribe if you didn't. That's still helpful too. You can just be nice. Um, but that's all I got right now. Uh, best of luck to you guys tonight, and I'll see you guys in the morning. Have a good one.